All right, we're back. We are going to be on page two of notes 14, talking about logistic differential equation. I don't know if I hammered home enough uh, the fact that you absolutely need to memorize everything in this box, just every single thing. Um, you're allowed to have the solution memorized, which is kind of weird. Um, and actually, they pretty much never, on the AP exam, ask you to solve it, in my experience. They more ask questions about the limit, to be honest. Uh, so make sure you have that memorized because we're just gonna use it. So we're gonna look at the differential equation, we're gonna identify things. Key part is that this has to be a one. If that's not a one, then the solution, uh, like the A is not really the same and then the numerator is not really the same, uh, make this a one. It's just like with uh, like arc 10 and the geometric series sum, like ones are really important, the form that you're looking at. So this needs to be a one. So K times Y, one minus Y over L. Then you can just read off L. As soon as it's like that, you know what L is. Um, you know that A is gonna be L minus Y zero over Y zero. Y zero is the initial amount. So let's, uh, let's see what's on this next page. So here's some slope fields. Uh, this is what the slope field looks like in general. And then I put in uh, four types of solutions that you will run into. Well, really, I, there's two types that you'll run into. So you can see here, we have like a pretty low initial condition and we stay low for a while, but eventually, boom. Uh, here, slightly higher, and you can see it's really sensitive to the initial amount. Like if the initial amount gets bigger, uh, it gets bigger much faster. Uh, here, this increases, and then here, it just almost immediately takes off, right? So it's sensitive to the initial condition. Uh, this is L, which means that at roughly half of that, so maybe actually I'll dot that in. So L is this linear solution. It's a, it's a horizontal line that if you plug it in, you get zero slope. And once you get that, you're never getting off of there. So I don't really know why those are above that. It might be a, I don't know, an artifact of, of me. They shouldn't pass above L. And it seems like they do in this. Uh, I don't know how to rectify that. Uh, L over two should be where the point of inflection is. So like, I don't know, maybe like here. You can see their point of inflection when y is equal to L over two. So the point of inflection is in terms of y, like you know the population at which that happens, which is kind of neat. And then, so if we start out below L, we're gonna get increasing solutions. If we start out above, we actually get decreasing solutions. And that's unusual. You get questions about the range sometimes. So if you start out and you aren't at L, you're never getting to L. It's an asymptote, but you never quite reach it. So if the question is about the range and, and you start above, then the range would be from L, but not including L, up to the initial value where you're just gonna decrease. If you start out with too many, things are basically gonna die until you get down to the limit. Sometimes the limit's called the carrying capacity. Uh, if you start out below, things are gonna grow until you get closer and then you're gonna even off. You never quite get there um, by the model. I mean, I guess in the real world that could actually happen and you do do that, get there, but not, not in the model. All right, so. So three of them are increasing. You will get a increasing solution uh, if y sub zero is less than L. Uh, the fourth one, you'll get a decreasing solution if y sub zero is greater than L. And then the points of inflection, POI at y equals L over two. So it's in terms of L. Now, if you think about the differential equation, you can also see that that's happening. And we talked about that in the last video, I think, K times Y, one minus Y over L. So this is a quadratic that has zeros, if this is the Y axis, at um, L and at zero, and then whatever, and this is L over two. So it's a quadratic that opens down because as a negative, if you expand this, you have a negative leading coefficient. That does not look like a great quadratic, but it's quadratic that opens down. Um, so at L over two, you're going to get your points of inflection. It is a little weird that the differential equation is in terms of Y, but we know another famous differential equation that's in terms of Y. Uh, this, dy dx is equal to Y. It's separable, but it's also just e to the X is the solution to that. So it's similar, but different. So it's like similar, but like maybe a little more realistic in a lot of situations. Uh, problem, verify that this is a solution with that. So 
I, I can think of two ways to do that. One of which seems like it'd be uh, significantly easier, perhaps. I don't know. I'm gonna do, so option number one. I'm just gonna solve the differential equation, right? So uh, option one. So the differential equation is dy dx equals three y one minus y over four. So the first thing that I look for is um, this is this one because if that's one then we're good to go From that I know that automatically once it's one I know that this is K So K is equal to three and I know automatically that this is L So L equals four and then uh, I know that a is going to be uh, L minus y zero over y zero which is four minus one over one, which is three. So then the solution should be y equals L, which is four over one plus A, which is three E to the negative K, which is three T. So we're able to basically like get, get everything just by, that's how you solve it. So that process that we went through that was like kind of terrible, you don't go through that process right you just like ha uh whoops i highlighted the wrong thing that's not this is this is k um so you don't really go through that process you just memorize it and then you can kind of go from there uh the other option too is uh we can find dy dx from this right so i'm gonna use what am i gonna use like the chain rule i guess uh, dy dx is, um, so I'm thinking of it as like four times that thing to the negative first. So it's going to be negative four, this thing to the negative second times the derivative of that thing, which is negative nine e to the negative three to x. And then I can simplify that to something 36 e to the negative three x over one plus three e to the negative three x squared. Okay, so I can do that. That's one version of the derivative. I'm gonna run out of space. And then the other version by substitution should be three times whatever y is, which is four over one plus, I'm just subbing into the differential equation. And then one minus um, one minus y over four. So one minus y over four, the fours cancel and you just get one plus three e to the negative three x. And then if I simplify this, it like pr probably works out uh, to being the same thing. It doesn't really look like it's going to to me. So that's one minus one, three, negative, negative nine, negative, negative oh no yeah you get these are the same you you could basically just trust me on this so you end up with uh like this times this is so over here we get one plus three e to the negative three x minus one so that's actually just three e to the negative three x so three e to the negative three x becomes the the numerator of this like combined fraction then times three times four is 36 e to the negative three x, and then denominator, denominator, so squared. So they're equivalent, 36 e to the negative three x. You know, uh, verifying that is left to the viewer. They are the same. So we got the same answer two different ways, which means it's equivalent, it's a solution. That's that's another way of verifying a solution. It's probably the, the way the question intended for you to do it. All right. I'm going to stop this here. I will be back in the next one uh, and do some more. So I will see you there.